Hey everyone, this is Prince from DC Programmer and in this video, we are going to discuss about the best beginner friendly BAAS that is backend as a service and backend frameworks that you can use as a beginner freelancer to deliver full stack products. You see, normally if you are a mobile developer, then you will not have to work with backend at all. But if you are a freelancer, especially in your initial stage, you may probably have to work with some backend. Or even if not, it is still good to learn a few things to obviously expand your domain. Now this video is just a simple distraction free approach to explain the best option instead of listing out all the possible options. I have also tried to grab from experience and explain the pros and cons which will better help you to choose one. Now obviously if you search the internet, the first answer is going to be Firebase. And why shouldn't it be? Because this has earned its place. Let's get started by talking about its pros. So Firebase is beginner friendly, which means it's easy to learn. You can just search on Google on YouTube and you will find a lot of community support and a lot of videos available. Firebase comes with auto scaling and what this basically means is that if you are, if you start gaining a lot of users, you don't have to do anything. Your app will basically automatically scale itself. Then Firebase gives you things like authentication so you can easily authenticate users with email password combination google uh, apple id github or even with the phone number again firebase gives you database and also it gives you an extra real time database there is a little you know confusion for beginners between them two but you can just go with cloud firestore firebase also gives you functions to write some custom backend code and there are tons of extra features also the reason why i mentioned real time db is that you can use the cloud firestore to easily get real time snapshots of your data this is really useful when you want to give some real time experience like for example you want to give real time chat experience building that with firebase is going to be super easy or even if you want to give other extra features such as the order page updates itself automatically if there is a change in the order status you can do that easily with real time database but 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 if you're getting too happy wait a little bit because it comes with some cons too and you should know about that before you get started or before you start using something for your client first thing is that it it has a vendor lock what this basically means is that if you are using firebase everything is owned by google so you can't just go and put something that is not from google or in the other words you can say that your entire data stays with google you are complete you are completely dependent on google for providing for all the services etc and this is not very bad thing this is not as evil as it sounds i just want to put it out there as a beginner or as someone who is just you know working for a client or giving them a simple basic application this is not going to be much of an issue the second issue is that it doesn't have a default full text search what i mean by default is that cloud firestore doesn't come with a full text search engine but you can use elastic search as an extension to use that now again if you are a beginner this might be a little confusing but in simple terms if you are trying to build something like let's say a doubt session so a user basically types anything and you are going to search in all the questions and answers if that particular word exists or not and you can then list them out now this is kind of a full text search and this is not going to be easy with cloud firestore second problem is uh, you know issues with queries there are some issues with compound queries with complex powerful queries and with things like pagination and etc because th it's not easy to get query length which will help you with pagination so you may end up either reading a lot of database and then that will increase your cost again not much of an issue but if you are trying to build something which depends on this you may have to think about it a little bit there are data export issues too now again this is this isn't much of an issue but you know you can't just export your entire database and then move it to other platform which also so this is something that kind of people think sometimes that hey what if i want to migrate then you have to you know kind of write your own code to migrate to other orm last one is real time db sucks now again i'm not talking about real time operations that is okay great real time db this is another database that initially came with firebase and the reason why real time db sucks is because when you use it you will see that this is just a giant json file kind of database so again don't use it because cloud firestore is now kind of the primary one that everybody uses so it will be easy i just listed out all the cons so that if you are thinking about doing something like full text search you will know that it's not easy you may have to you know learn a little bit about elastic search enabling the extension and how to work with the extension anyway with this done if you are thinking that okay i don't want to go with firebase i'm not a big fan of firebase 
then I'm going to list out two more products in the same category, which is backend as a service, and they are going to be Superbase and AppRide. I know Superbase uh, sounds similarly as Firebase, but it's not that. Now you'll be wondering if you have, you know, searched Google or if you have watched some YouTube videos, you will know that there are many backend as a service providers. Then why am I listing these only? See, the reason why I have chosen Firebase, Superbase and AppRite is because they come with an SDK. What this means is that when you are interacted with anything as such, there is an easy way to interact that is using REST APIs. But as a beginner, if you are using a client SDK, it's going to be very simple. And the reason they all come with client SDKs is why I'm listing them. And again, the, you know, it's easy, it's powerful, it's widely used. That too is the main reason. Now, if you talk about Superbase and AppRite, the first, let's talk about the pros. And both of them have the similar kind of pros. First thing is that you own your data. What it basically means is that, you know, you can self-deploy and have your data at your own server, stuff like that. And they too provide authentication. There is database, there is real-time database support. And there also you can use functions to write your own custom code but they also have powerful query support something that lacks in firebase and thing, second thing is that they have full text search by default so again that too won't be an issue if you're trying to do something that deals with full text search so these are the prompts of this platform cons there are some cons too first of all they are not really beginner friendly i'm not saying that it's very hard to learn any of them but if you are an absolute beginner if you're just going to if you're just if you're just getting started with things like authentication or using third party code and stuff like that then you are going to face some issues some challenges because you're not going to find many tutorials you're not going to find a lot of community support especially not for absolute beginners second thing is that they ha you have to do kind of self deployment now this too is not very hard like for example if with app right you get a one click install on DigitalOcean, so it's not very hard but yeah it's something you know you might if for someone who hasn't even heard about DistroLotion for someone who has never created an account to DistroLotion, it is going to be a little bit tough. Next thing is that there's no cloud messaging. This is something very important in Firebase is that you get cloud messaging support. Using this, you can send notification on your mobile apps and web apps. Here, you don't get that, so that's going to be an issue. And at the end, you also don't have extra add-ons as you have with Firebase. You see, Firebase is provided by Google. It's really a complex suite of many products you get so many things that you probably won't even use there is crass analytics there is analytics then just as i said there's cloud messaging there is a remote config and so many things that there are extension support too there is machine learning so many things that you may not use but they are there if you ever you know have to use and these are the things that you're not going to get in these platforms but again, I won't say that this is an issue. That's completely fine, depending on the product that you're using. Just as I said, these are all beginner friendly. So I assume you're not going to develop something very complex as of now. Now, having done with this, if you're thinking that, okay, these are backend as a service frameworks, right? What if I go to my own custom backend? Well, you can do that too. That's not an issue. So here I'm going to talk about only two web frameworks. There are tons of them, obviously, without any doubt. I'm just going to list out two, which are very, beginner friendly now most of you might not be expecting laravel right here but i'm going to put this one in this place too so the reason why i'm putting laravel here is that it's based in php now php might be a kind of i won't say complex but a different kind of programming language but laravel makes the backend development process a little bit easier especially if you have such applications where you have to just do a little bit of authentication and a lot of CRUD operations and that's it that's that's pretty much what your operation is or what your application is then laravel is really amazing so you can easily deploy laravel what i mean is that you don't have to worry about spinning off a vps and then setting up your own server etc you can just buy a shared hosting upload your files and you're almost done second thing is that crud operations are really easy you can just you know again just as i said spin up your own um sorry just buy a shared hosting set up everything put up your database and then CRUD operations are simple create a database a model and then create get uh, update delete etc really simple if you you know if you learn about laravel a little bit you will realize what i'm talking about apis generating apis is also very simple there is a lot of support by default so you will love this authentication api authentication token authentication this is something that when you really think about these things like you okay, have to do some kind of token authentication you will realize that adding these things in your custom bank it is not very easy but laravel does that and it does that with a lot of less code like you don't even have to write much code it's just a couple of lines and there you have an entire token based authentication system ready 
now the issues with laravel is some issues in scale you know you will realize what i'm talking about only once you learn but yeah issues in scale and when i say that hey okay, laravel is going to have some issues in scale don't think that all right if i get 50000 users i'm going to have i'm going to have and i'm going to face a lot of problems that's not true at all that's not what i mean when i say there are going to be issues in scale i mean that when you have so many concurrent users then you may have some issues there are issues in complex application just as i said it's php based so some people are not very i will say comfortable with writing very complex applications and one last thing that i don't really find a you know very happily going on with laravel is to is using third party code i'm not saying that you can't but if you are a beginner if you have never used things like that then you may find this a little bit you know irritating or not much beginner friendly i must say if you want to use some third party code and also laravel is kind of sql loving i'm not saying that if you can't use other databases with laravel you can obviously but you know laravel comes with eloquent orm by default which is basically pretty much focused on sql so if you're using laravel it's kind of just goes without saying that you would be using sql so you know keep that in mind a little bit and if you are thinking that okay i want to code my own backend framework that's true but i don't want to have such issues you know i just maybe it's not very easy to code crud or apis but i am completely fine with that i want to just get something better so for a beginner i will recommend express js at the end again with express js i'm not saying that it's tough you can again easily deploy your code even on shared hosting most shared hosting provide support you just have to ask them once if i can deploy node js code or not or it's very easy to you know spin up a vps and most of them even provide a one click install support so you can do that too crud operations are again easy i'm not saying it's hard just use some orm that are available by default and you can easily do crud operations you can easily create apis too you can easily work with any database that you want and using third party libraries with express js really easy and when you are working on a product you will see that you are going to use so many third party libraries but you see the issue is that it's had a, it has a little bit learning curve i'm not saying that learning laravel is easy in comparison to express js for a beginner both of them are kind of same but you see if you are talking about api development with laravel you can you know easily watch those tutorials and build an api with express js2 you can do that but there are some confusion with server side rendering code what i mean to say is that if you are trying to learn express js and go into the field of ejs and passport js and stuff like that then they are pretty much server side rendering based based on and if you want to use this code in mobile app it's not going to be possible The reason why I'm saying this is because I have seen some people who have kind of learned it. I'm not saying they have not learned. They learned Express JS, but what they learned was Express JS, EJS, and big uh, because there are many such tutorials available and Passport JS, Multer, etc. And what they knew was dev- backend development, obviously, but it was server side rendering. What it means is that you can't use that in a mobile application. So that was a little bit issue. better possible alternative the reason why i have put this out here is because if you are again wandering off a lot on youtube you will say things like hey this new framework is a lot better than express js and stuff like that i mean okay obviously fastify is little better with express js so you can say next 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 js not next js is better with express js but the point is not that the point is that express js has a lot of tutorials available so for a beginner it will be easy to learn understand deploy and get their application up and running So anyway, that's pretty much it from my side in this video. I tried to keep this short, but don't sort. I've already recorded for fifteen minutes. Let me see how small I can make it. But the point is that if you are, uh, you know, a front-end developer and if you want to get with back-end development, nowadays there are two broad options: back-end as a service and custom back-end development. Back-end as a service, I have listed out three options. I'm not listing out many options. So no, you can just choose one from three. It will be easy to pick. And for back-end development, I have again listed out just two options. There are many, obviously. two simple ones choose any of them get started once you are done it will be easy to move forward with that that's pretty much it from my side in this video i'll talk to you i'll see you soon in the next video till then keep coding keep saving keep learning and peace